In this module, we'll introduce you to an assessment tool that gives you information on how to protect yourself from Chrome 6. Welders often think that hot work on metals like galvanized or inconel or even aluminum are worse than welding on stainless steel. It's true that a long day of welding on galvanized or inconel without a respirator can give you metal fume fever. And manganese has been found to affect the nervous system. But rarely do you hear about welders getting sick after a day of welding on stainless. Some call Chrome 6 the hidden hazard. As April, a welding instructor for the iron workers says here, Smoke from stainless steel is a lot worse than you might think. Make sure you find ways to protect yourself while welding on stainless steel. Long-term exposure to Chrome 6 may cause ulcers in your nose, bronchitis, asthma, and even lung cancer. In this module, you'll be introduced to HexCheck's Chrome 6 Exposure Assessment Tool. This tool will help you identify two important parameters that may increase your exposure to Chrome 6 fumes. These are your hot work process and your workspace, whether it's an outdoor area, an open shop, a restricted space with some barriers, or a confined space. Based on air monitoring data, we know that submerged arc and TIG welding result in very low Chrome 6 exposures, while flux core, stick, and carbon arc cutting can result in high Chrome 6 exposures. MIG welding exposures are often right around the PEL, depending on where and how it's being done. Understanding how these conditions relate to your Chrome 6 exposure helps you to assess your risk and determine if you need natural or general ventilation, local exhaust ventilation, or local exhaust ventilation and respiratory protection to keep exposures below the permissible exposure limit. It's important that your workspace be equipped with appropriate ventilation that can keep your exposure to Chrome 6 and other welding fumes below the regulatory limits. The Washington State Department of Labor and Industries has permissible exposure limits, or PELs, for hundreds of chemicals which are based on an 8-hour work shift. Your average airborne exposure during the monitor work shift is compared to the chemical specific PEL. The PEL is the highest level of exposure an employee may be exposed to without appreciable risk of adverse health effects. The PEL for Chrome 6 is 5 micrograms per cubic meter of air. If your full shift Chrome 6 exposure is above this level, you are considered overexposed to a hazardous airborne carcinogen and your long term health may be at risk. Now back to the assessment tool for an in-depth look. First, we'll look at the welding process. It's no surprise that different hot work processes generate different airborne concentrations of Chrome 6. The level of ventilation and the personal protective equipment required depends on which welding process is being used. Submerged arc welding lays down a lot of metal in a short period of time, but there is a protective layer of slag over the material so that the operator isn't exposed to the fumes. Your exposure will always be below the exposure limit and sub-arc is not likely to be done in a confined space due to the large equipment constraints. Because TIG uses a non-consumable electrode, TIG welding on stainless generates very low levels of Chrome 6 fume. If you weld using TIG, your exposure will likely be below the Chrome 6 exposure limit unless you're in a confined space. It's a little less clear with solid wire MIG welding. When comparing a lot of MIG welding results, the average exposure is usually around the PEL. The values will depend on the airflow in your workspace, the equipment you use, and even your wire feed rate, welding current, transfer mode, and shielding gas. Stick and flux core arc welding are both likely to generate fumes above the Chrome 6 limit. If you stick or flux core arc weld without proper ventilation, your exposure to Chrome 6 will likely be above the PEL. Finally, Carbon arc and other cutting processes often generate exposure above the Chrome 6 PEL. But cutting is not usually done all day, so full shift exposures may be lower. This depends on what other work you're doing the rest of the shift. Research shows that you're most likely to be overexposed to Chrome 6 while stick or flux core arc welding because the flux material on each and because these processes may be done for hours on end. Stick welding is not only smoky, but it's also portable and often used in hard to reach confined spaces where ventilation is very limited. Next, let's think about the airflow at the location where you're doing your welding. Your workspace may increase your risk for exposure to Chrome 6. Different locations and work conditions require different methods of ventilation. 
your risk of exposure can increase as airflow and natural ventilation are reduced, such as when you move from outdoors to an open, well-ventilated workspace, to a restricted workspace like a welding booth or hooch, or worse yet, to a confined space like a vessel or tank. You may think that working outside poses a lower risk for breathing concentrated fumes, but this may not be the case. It's ultimately about the material, process, and whether air is being moved away from your breathing zone. When you think about your workspace, you should also consider what other work is happening around you. It doesn't help much to ventilate your fumes if you're working downwind of someone who's carbon arc cutting, nor do you want to overexpose your buddy by working upwind of him, as Mike, a longtime welder and safety trainer, shows here. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Instead of using a smoke sucker, we'll just put a fan over here. That works pretty good, doesn't it? Well, it works fine for me, but what about my buddy next door? Do you think I'm going to make any points with him? Nah, that doesn't work. If you're going to deal with X-Chrome, collect it instead of blow it on your partner next door, huh? Remember, keeping the workplace safe is a shared responsibility. Now, let's put together these two factors, process and workspace. Select your hot work process, Identify which category best describes your workspace, and the Chrome 6 Exposure Assessment Tool will help you determine the recommended controls to keep you safe. Let's try a couple of examples. What if you're TIG welding in a welding booth? A welding booth is considered a workspace with restricted airflow, but we also learned that TIG welding generates very little fumes, which is why natural or general ventilation is adequate for this job. How about stick welding in an open workspace? We know that stick welding is a smoky process that generates chrome 6 fumes. Therefore, even in an open workspace with general ventilation, LEV, and maybe even respiratory protection would be needed. The chrome 6 exposure assessment tool assumes that the welders who use it will be working on stainless steel. Stainless steel is the alloy most likely to contain high amounts of chromium. But this doesn't mean all materials used in stainless steel welding are the same. The filler metal contributes as much as 95% of the total welding fume. You should always consult the material safety data sheets to accurately identify the chromium content of both the base and filler metal you work with. The bottom line is that hot work on chromium containing metals generates chrome 6. The more chromium in your base metal, the more chromium in your filler metal, and the more chrome 6 in your fumes. The chrome 6 exposure assessment tool is based on estimates from welding research. Your employer is required to conduct air monitoring tests to measure your exposure to Chrome 6, but it's still important for you to understand the risk factors as well. Working together with your employer, you can create an environment that is safe for everyone over the long term. Remember, if the assessment tool shows green, you're good to go with natural ventilation. If the tool shows yellow, slow down and set up LEV before you proceed. If the tool shows red, stop and grab your respirator and set up the LED before you begin the job.